Hey guys, Pastor Don. I know so many of you out there right now are feeling lonely, isolated. Uh, maybe you're experiencing a little bit of depression or maybe a lot of depression. Maybe you're just kind of going through the highway of life. I mean, you're just got the metal on the, you've got the metal to the pedal and you're going a thousand miles an hour. You, you can't slow down. You're stressed out, put out, don't know what to do. The one thing that's not foremost on your mind is God, but he's back there someplace. Maybe the experience that you're going through, he's on the forefront of your mind. You know, one of the things I hear people say so much to me is that I'm so busy, I just don't have time for church. I don't have time for Sunday mornings. I wouldn't have time for a Sunday evening. I don't have time for a Wednesday night. I don't have time for a Bible study. I've got the kids going here. I've got them going there. I've got to take my, parent, my adult parents to this place or that place, and I just don't have time. And a lot of people even sink into the belief that you know what, my relationship with Jesus is between me and Him, and it really doesn't involve anybody else. It doesn't involve the church. It, it's, an, it's just not anybody else's business um, how I conduct my life or live out my faith. I want to share a story. I want to share something with you that, that I hope helps put some things into, into a context for you. When I was a military chaplain, one of the things that I learned as a, as a young second lieutenant was, man, when you're in the foxhole with somebody, it doesn't matter. You are living day in and day out with these people. You begin to learn their quirks, what triggers them, what makes them happy, what brings a smile to their face. You begin to hear the stories about their families, the things that make them sad. You bond with one another. And then in the training exercises, you bond even more because now you are accomplishing a mission. You're doing something together. And that togetherness is really, really important. It's where a unit bonds. It's where it prepares itself for combat. So that when that day comes and you're in the foxhole, you know, it's amazing what happens. You talk to these guys who came back from Afghanistan or Iraq. It doesn't matter if they were regular army or if they were special forces of some kind. What you begin to realize real quick is, is that these guys, they weren't fighting for their country anymore. They weren't fighting for the things that happened in the past. They weren't fighting even because there was an enemy. They were fighting for each other. They genuinely cared about one another. That no man, they don't come home empty handed. That they don't leave their, their, their brother or their sister behind. And there's that kind of love and depth of care for one another that happens. It's amazing. I never saw as much crying as I saw when I was in the Army. Not even when I was in the Navy. Yes, I was enlisted Navy as well. But I never saw so much crying as I saw in the Army. These people genuinely loved and cared for one another. Now, I, I say this story, I share this with you, because I need you to understand that the idea of, of the church is no different. You may not believe this, you may have never been taught this, you might have never thought about it, but in 2 Timothy 2.4, we're reminded that we are enlisted in God's army. That it says the one who is enlisted doesn't go out of their way to disappoint the one who enlisted them. And so when we were baptized and sealed in the Holy Spirit, that is that day, that moment, that time which we became part of the battle that rages all around us. Yes, there's a spiritual war everywhere. If we could peel back the layers and see what Daniel saw, and other prophets even for that matter back in the Old Testament, if we could peel back the layers and see the heavens and the wars that are going on around us between the angels and the demons, we would be shocked. We would be amazed. Ephesians 6, 3, uh, I believe it's chapter... Uh, yeah, Ephesians 6, 12 or 13 <laughs> says that we're not, a, we're not at war with flesh and blood, but we're at, we're at war with the spiritual forces of, the, of wickedness in the heavenly places and those who are under their domain, the world rulers under their domain, those who are adversaries of Christ. And so there's a spiritual war that's going on. And I don't know about you, but more and more I sense it, I feel it, I know that it's real. 
I, I experience it in different ways. Sometimes it's a conversation with someone. Sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's an interaction that has that's nonverbal. Maybe it's something that happened to me that just in the worst time possible, the worst thing that could happen, and it's those moments when I, 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 I pray and I ask God to take over and to do for me what I can't do for myself. I know that there are angels all around me. Uh, there have been times my wife and I, our, I think our dogs sense it, to be honest with you. They'll, sometimes we'll see a, just a white streak in our living room. And the dogs are looking up and looking around and it's nighttime. There's no lights. There's no reason for there to be any light moving around. So I know that the angels are there. And I know that God is protecting us. And what I would say to you is, is that if you're that person who says church didn't make a difference in my life, well, it's because you didn't go to training in church. <laughs> you didn't spend enough time with people to bond with them to learn what their hurts and their burdens and their things are. You know, the Bible tells us that we're supposed to carry each other's burdens. That doesn't mean that we just help each other when times are difficult. Yes, that's certainly part of it, but it's certainly not all of it. I mean, the biggest part of it is that when one of us sins or one of us falls into doubt or struggle, that we carry that burden with one another. We're praying for one another. We're we're encouraging one another. We're, we don't give up on each other, right? That's what it means to carry each other's burdens. When we're not in the body, you know, the, 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 the thing that drives me crazy about a megachurch, and this is not a slap against megachurches per se, but it is a challenge that they face, is, is that when they're so big, it's so easy just to go in on Sunday morning and check off the box and say, you know what, I went to church, I feel good this week, uh, but I didn't talk to a soul. I didn't pray with anyone. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Nobody knows the adversities, the challenges. They don't know my pains. They, they don't know that my spouse just walked out on me and I feel destitute and lost. I feel broken. I don't know what to do. They don't know that I just lost the job that I have been in for years that I absolutely loved. It was, it was my career. It was my future. Uh, they don't know that the bank account is empty. I don't know how I'm going to pay the mortgage or if I'm going to lose my house or my car. I can't even buy groceries. I'm on public assistance right now. What, whatever the case may be, right? Nobody knows that my parent died. And I'm going through it alone. I'm fighting with my siblings over issues. Guys, we weren't meant to go through this alone. That's not what God's intention for us was nor is it. The church is so much more than just a Sunday morning. It really is. Church is a connection point. It's an opportunity for the body of Christ to come together and it's an opportunity for us to, to worship together and to do some learning together, but it's so much more than that. You know, when we break bread, when we partake in communion, we are, we are bonding with one another in the body of Christ. We are acknowledging that He is with us. We are acknowledging that we belong to Him. And so I think the struggle for so many of us at the end of the day is just that we've bought into this narrative that my faith is my own and it's not anyone else's, but that's not in the Bible anywhere. And that's certainly not going to help you in your life, in spiritual warfare. It's not going to help you in the challenges and the adversity of living this life. You weren't meant to live it alone, especially as a Christian, especially as someone who belongs to Jesus. I mean, we are, the Bible tells us that we're a new creation in Christ, and that new creation, it takes the old thing and it replaces it with the new, but it's up to us. It is up to us to engage that, to, to, to shed that childlikeness and to mature in our faith and our growth and to know that when things happen in our life that we experience God, we experience the Holy Spirit and we experience all of that individually and through the circumstances of our life but we also experience that through one another. I can't tell you how many times when somebody knew my situation they came and they blessed me. That God used them as a part of my story in that moment of my life. So if you're isolated right now, if you're lonely, 
if you feel like there's no meaning or purpose to your life, it might be that there's a reason you're feeling that way. It might be true. I would encourage you, find a church. Find a church that will love you, that will embrace you. Find a group of Christians that will, that will be there for you, that will carry your burdens and that you can carry their burdens, that you can grow in the faith together. You cannot grow your faith in isolation. It's just, it's just not possible. I know that I've done that in my life and it doesn't work. And it's not going to work in yours either. So leave a comment. Let me know kind of what you think. Let me know your thoughts. Did this video have any impact on you? Have what, are the words that I'm speaking to you, uh, have they revealed something to you? My hope and my prayer is that you feel the love of Jesus, that you feel the warmth and the peace of the Holy Spirit, and you know that your Heavenly Father will never leave you or forsake you. So God bless you. I'm looking forward to chatting with you again soon.